Welcome, ladies and gents. Chris Andre here. You can find me at Bet Boxing on Twitter. Of course, you can subscribe to the channel. Let's talk boxing. Alexander Usyk just put in another masterclass, in my opinion, to beat Anthony Joshua. He won the fight on points. I personally had him winning uh, eight rounds to four. It was a split decision with the American judge Feldman having it 115-113 to AJ, the British judge having it 115-113 to Alexander Usyk, and the Ukrainian judge having it 116-112 to Alexander Usyk. I thought they both operated at a supremely high level. I thought it was an absolutely terrific fight from that perspective. The fight went pretty much exactly as I expected. If you go back and watch the preview, all the patterns turned out the way they turned out. The only difference being, I thought Usyk would probably get him late. He didn't. He ended up winning the fight on points. We'll talk about that right now. First and foremost, in the first round, I had Alexander Usyk outlanding him, and it became quite clear that Anthony Joshua was more controlled. We spoke in the preview that that needed to be the case. Don't react as much to the lead hand of Alexander Usyk. Be more controlled, focused on the body. He did that. He wasn't really applying pressure, but he did that. Um, he did try at one point to throw the left hook behind the ear as well to initiate a clinch and look for an uppercut through the center line, which is again what we spoke about in the middle in the in the preview. So I thought there's some good signs here. The second round was better for AJ. Uh, again, as we said in the preview, have that narrow stance because one thing that a narrow stance enables you to do is shift your feet more quickly. And by shifting your balance more quickly, it enables you to be more mobile. And you can take these short shifts forward and backwards to to uh, dictate distance in a better manner than if you've got a wide stance it helps you be more mobile and he was doing that and he was lining up Alexander Usyk with the backhand to the body every time Usyk tried to step in again something we spoke about in the preview he also landed a left hook to the body as Alexander Usyk pivoted to come out of the pocket another thing we mentioned in the preview so at this point I'm thinking oh maybe I'm you know I joked on Twitter maybe Anthony Joshua actually saw the preview here he's doing the right thing the third round was a swing round but again I had that going to Anthony Joshua because he landed Landed the cleaner shots. Usyk uh, needed to land something bigger, in my opinion, at that point to start to get AJ to react to the feint because he still wasn't reacting to the feint. AJ was boxing smartly here. Now, Robert Garcia told him, we've got you 3-0 up. I certainly didn't think he won the first round. The third was a swing, like I said, but I definitely didn't have him 3-1 up. Now, despite that, from the perspective of a tactical perspective and how much energy he was exerting, not going too over the top, I thought it was a good start from AJ. After that, I had Usyk going on a bit of a run. Uh, I had him winning the fourth round. Uh, he started to find a lot more of a, a home for the backhand, and he started to rotate away from the right hook and the right uppercut of AJ moving towards his own left. And at that point, I wanted to start seeing Anthony Joshua throw more of a left hook to start catching him on the exit. Uh, he wasn't doing that as much. But by the fifth round, you saw that again, AJ had his tactics spot on, even though Usyk won the round. He was trying to lure Usyk in. He was reacting every time Usyk was stepping in, doing some work. If he wasn't catching him on the way in, AJ was throwing as Usyk was exiting the pocket. So he'd be coming in, doing his work, and as he's getting out, AJ would give him a shot to think about as he's leaving, usually to the body. So it was very controlled. And again, he's in there with a superior fighter who's very good at hiding different parts of his body, covering up, knowing what angles to come in at to take shots away from you. He's in against one of the best fighters of all time. You know, so you're talking about an Olympic gold medalist, undisputed cruiserweight champion, unified heavyweight champion, like I said, without ever tasting defeat. He's in there against a real master. So when you take that into account, he's doing very, very well here, Anthony Joshua. But you're starting to see after that, Usyk starts to pull away. He starts to land the more consistent work. Uh, and you can see that he's AJ starting to swing bigger shots in and a lot of them are coming off the arms, the forearms, the, the elbows and Usyk's blocking a lot of them. So although they might be eye catching from maybe a judge's perspective, he wasn't really winning those those exchanges. And so I had Usyk going up 5-2. Uh, there was one moment in that seventh round where Anthony Joshua had Usyk in a clinch and he disengaged in the clinch. To me, that was an error. You have to be in that situation where when you get him in that clinch, like we said in the preview, lean on him. If you're, if there's nothing on for you to throw a punch, to land something significant, just lean. Let him carry your weight. You had Pabon in there, who was the referee that refereed Klitschko against Povetkin, and Klitschko was practically riding Povetkin like a horse in that fight. Pause, right? But he was all over him, on top of him, making him carry his weight. And I've always said that if that was any other referee that night, and it wasn't Pabon. I believe Povetkin would have smoked Klitschko that night. I don't think Vladimir had the inside game to deal with Povetkin. But he was able to overcome that by holding and leaning and being very aggressive in the clinch. 
Well, Anthony Joshua potentially had the opportunity to be dirty, and he was dirty with a couple of low blows, but I'm talking about to lean and really, you know, throw him on the floor if you have to, fight in that manner. He didn't really do that up until this point. Then... Five th uh, the, the eighth round was a massive round for Anthony Joshua, but he made an error. The body shot clearly affected Alexander Usyk. And we spoke in the preview that what happens when you hurt Alexander Usyk is that he has a tremendous poker face, but he becomes a little bit gun shy. He starts to move around the ring and he changes the angle of his movements, which makes him harder to follow around, but he stops throwing punches. And we said when AJ's going to have to lure him onto a shot, once you land that big shot, you have to go for it. Don't try and box this guy for 12 rounds. You wait for your moment and you go for it. He didn't do that. Then came the ninth, and that was an even bigger round for Anthony Joshua. That was a massive round. And what started it, again, he lured him in. I can't remember if this was the first punch that started it. I'd have to rewatch, but it certainly happened. At one point, Usyk tries to step in, and he dips and throws uh, an uppercut to the body. So again, he's lured him in. He's reacted to the entry point of Usyk, who's got those narrow legs bouncing around, switching side to side, changing the angles. But there always comes a point where he has to step in. And as he stepped in, AJ timed him beautifully. And then he put in a big effort to try and take him out. And you can't fault him for that. Like I was saying, he had to find the opportunity to do that. For me, he should have done it in round eight. But like I also said in the preview, when Anthony Joshua tends to go for it and he lets go of a big effort, like against Vladimir Klitschko and Pulev, the subsequent rounds, he gasses. He takes time to get his second win. And like I said in the preview, unlike Vladimir Klitschko and unlike Kubrat Pulev, Usyk is the sort of fighter that will up the tempo the immediate round after that. And what did you see in round 10? Usyk really upped the round and you heard, up the tempo and you heard uh, um, Eddie Hearn say post fight, oh, I've never seen a, a, a guy like that be able to, to, you know, to really pull away in such an important moment of the fight. He really upped it in round 10 and that's what makes him the pound for pound number one fighter in the world. Indeed, that is what makes him the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. But I was expecting it, you know. I was at home here and the missus was saying to me, oh no, uh, you know, this is a massive moment here. This is, this could be the end here. This is big for Anthony Joshua. And I was saying he didn't get him out of there. He didn't get him out of there and watch Usyk come on strong in this next round because that is what he does. And you know that AJ's tempo drops and he had that massive 10th round. But even in that round, AJ again landed that big right hand, which hurt Alexander Usyk. But whether he didn't have the gas tank to by that point or not, he wasn't able to up the tempo. He allowed another clinch a little bit too easily, something we also spoke about as a potential problem in the preview. Uh, and after that, I had Alexander Usyk winning the, the last two rounds as well. They were short shots. They weren't always sharp, but AJ's head was getting smacked around. It looked like a, a pinball machine at times. Uh, and AJ was looking for those sporadic big shots. By this point, AJ had to really just go for it and just you know turn it dirty, throw big punches, caution to the wind, hope that you land something, uh, but he wasn't able to. But the thing is, Anthony Joshua boxed out of his skin and he fought in the right moments. So a few people have said to me, shouldn't he have gone for it early when he was fresh? No, because if you go and look at that ninth round when he did have that big round and he hurt Alexander Usyk, just go and watch Usyk's movement. Watch the way Usyk, as he exits the pocket, he's continually changing the angles and making your feet reset. So he's crossing his feet, Anthony Joshua at that point. He's trying to get close to Usyk, who's now in full defensive mode, and he can't quite get on top of him. This is the difficult area. If he, if Usyk himself is 100% fresh and you haven't set up a big shot to hurt him, you know, if you've hurt him to the body and you're chasing him, and that's how good his movement is defensively, how are you just going to run after him and chase him when he's fresh? If you can't get to him when he's been hurt, how are you going to get to him when he's fresh? So, no, I don't think Anthony Joshua should have just run after him and bum-rushed him in the first few rounds. I think that would have definitely got him stopped. We also said in the preview that if Anthony Joshua boxes the way that I suggested, which he did, that rather than gas early, I felt that you would start to see it around nine rounds, eight, nine rounds is when you start to see, you know, the turn towards Usyk. In other words, he'd be fresher and more competitive for longer. And it was after the ninth round that he had that massive round, Alexander Usyk. It was in the 10th where you start to see the turn of the tide to really solidify who's going to win here. So, listen, it was a terrific fight. I, I thought Alexander Usyk just showed levels. I thought that Anthony Joshua got his tactics spot on. I thought he boxed out of his skin. But ultimately, he was in against 
a great, and I think they were both great fighters. I think they would both be superb fighters in any era. And I think that also applies to Tyson Fury. So I really hope we do get to see Undisputed. With regards to the judging, 116-112, like I said, the Ukrainian judge had it. 115-113, uh, the British judge had it, both to Alexander Usyk. And the American Glenn Feldman had it, 115-113 to Anthony Joshua. I struggle to see how AJ could have won that fight, although I do think it was competitive. I don't think he won that fight at all. I don't think you can make a case for it. Now, with regards to that little meltdown that Anthony Joshua had at the end of the fight, I actually found that to be quite sad, to be honest with you. I totally understand people that are saying this was distasteful. He took away Alexander Usyk's moment, let him have his moment to shine. You took it away. I personally just feel that it was an overspill of emotion. And although it was a little bit distasteful, I do feel as though it was almost like a breakdown, like an emotional, mental breakdown on national TV. You know, Anthony Joshua has had an awful lot of pressure to deal with throughout the course of his entire career. This is a guy that started boxing very, very late and you saw that he wanted to make that known. And basically what he's doing there is justifying. He's justifying why he lost. You know, he's, he's talking about it in the sense that, you know, please stop criticizing me. You know, you guys expect me to throw combinations. I can't do that. Like a guy like Rocky Marciano, who's 14 stone. I'm a bigger man. I can't fight like that. I'm against this guy who's a phenomenal fighter and he's putting Usyk on a pedestal. He's also speaking about, you know, the things that he's had to overcome in terms of the pressure of Usyk and what has gone on in his country. So he's, he's trying to be considerate with the way he's speaking. He's not it was disrespectful when he threw the belts down. You know, he had his moment there, his little hissy fit. But the truth is, uh, I actually feel sorry for Anthony Joshua. To me, that was like seeing a public breakdown. You know how sometimes you see these celebrities that have been child celebrities from when they were, well, celebrities from when they were kids, right? These child movie stars and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden they go off the rails and you hear about them hitting hard drugs when they're in their teens or, I don't know, singers shaving their heads, female singers shaving their heads and going nuts and start smashing things up. To me, that was not as crazy as a moment like that because as Carl Froch rightly said, he didn't actually say anything too offensive. He didn't say anything that was terrible that you're going to look back and say, AJ, man, like you acted terribly there. But I think he's going to be embarrassed by his behavior. And to me, it just felt like, an emotional breakdown and I felt really sorry for the guy. I think he's terrific as a fighter, he can come back again. Um, look, I understand that he lost an awful lot of fans uh, in recent years for a variety of different situations. I know that, you know, I put this out on Twitter about it being a breakdown, I feel sorry for him. And I've had a number of people that agreed with me, but a number of people were saying, no, I disagree. Uh, I had one person say that what happened at uh, Watford, sorry, at, uh, yeah, what was it Wembley, Wembley or Watford, where he gave that speech about where to shop. He lost a lot of fighters, fans there. That's true. He also lost a lot of fans after that when he did a little campaign with Jesse Lingard to push, um, to push something. You guys can look into this <laughs> uh, in Africa, and there were people that were against that that felt it was you know not his place to do something like that, and they felt that he was wrong. So I saw that he lost a lot of fans in that regard. But to me, he also lost fans prior to that in 2019. Prior to those things occurring, when he lost to Andy Ruiz, you had a lot of casual fans that were on the bandwagon, that loved AJ, they were you know, really caught up in the hype, that just ten, turned their back on him. And so you're considering this guy who's had this pressure put on his shoulders, he's catapulted into the limelight, you have to win, you have to win. He's not been given lots of development fights, he's having one or two fights a year. He's knowing he has to perform with style because they're trying to create him into this pay-per-view star. He's taking big fights early in his career, taking risks. You know, he fought Vladimir Klitschko when he didn't have that many fights, man. Like, there's a lot of pressure there. And, you know, he's come up against a supreme fighter, one of the best of all time, and he's fallen short. And I just think that all the emotion just sort of came to the fore. So I'm a little bit more understanding of what happened. I feel a little bit sorry for Anthony Joshua and I hope that the people around him over the next few days really stay close, put their arm around him, band around him because he's gonna go through some dark places, man. You have to understand, AJ hasn't lived the life that you and I have lived whereby you can walk down the street. And you know, I've met AJ on a few occasions and I met him before he became big and he could go out and about. And even then he would get attention. Whereas imagine him now, imagine Anthony Joshua now, he openly speaks, he can't go on holiday to normal places, he can't just decide, you know what, let me just pop to Nando's, let me pop to the supermarket, he can't do that. 
He's a star that's got the limelight on him everywhere he goes. People are going to be coming up to him asking for autographs. Any little thing that he's going to say is going to be analysed. We do it on this channel, right? Don't we analyse the, the psyche of Anthony Joshua? And we don't do it maliciously, but there's a constant spotlight on AJ. That's the point. And, you know, you've got all that pressure. You have to deliver. People questioning you. University students mocking you when you're walking through Loughborough. You know, kids that are silver spooned, being fed with a silver spoon that have never had anything to overcome in their lives. And they're mocking Anthony Joshua. There's a lot of pressure that comes with that. You want to prove people wrong. You want to shut people up. Because ultimately, sport is the glory business. It's easy to say you, should, you shouldn't care. What are you in sport for? You're in sport to achieve your dreams. It's not just money. It's about glory. And glory means what? It means the love of the public. So when the public are putting you down or when the public are questioning you, it can, it can affect certain characters. So I feel sorry for Anthony Joshua, man. Anyway, that's my take on it. Terrific display from Alexander Usyk. Solidifies himself, as far as I'm concerned, as one of the best of all time. Hopefully now we get to see one of the biggest heavyweight fights of all time and see him face up against Tyson Fury. Tomorrow I'll be bringing a video discussing the undercard as well. Thanks for watching, everyone. Chat to you soon. Take care. God bless. Please don't forget to hit the like button with a jab, the subscribe button with a right cross, and the notifications button with a stiff uppercut. Take care.